Hi folks, Slick Slices here. Uh, now I'm, now I'm planning on doing a full series of knives, a series of videos on my fixed blade knives. I don't have a huge number, uh, you know. I collect folding blade knives, but I just seem to have accumulated some fixed blade knives over time, um, often for reasons. This is sort of the first of that series. Although I have done one of my um, Faulkner and Embler, but this is the first of the series and i'm doing this one right at this moment because it's sort of time limited my uh, my daughter's getting married and uh, as we live in scotland it's it's not a full highland wedding um, but the groom and the best man and the usher will be wearing kilts i'm giving my daughter away but being a, as i'm in a wheelchair uh, kilts and wheelchairs don't always work very well so I'll be wearing um, a Highland outfit but uh, with tartan trues, uh, trues being trousers or pants if you're American but they're a particular sort of style of trouser, um, very high waisted with a fishtail back. Um, anyway so that's what I'll be wearing but um, as a, it's a sort of traditional gift is a ski and do or uh, the the traditional short knife that's carried when wearing the kilt and um, I asked Ashley Harrison to make some for me for the groom and the best man and the usher and myself and he made he, he well we ended up with a bit of confusion we ended up with three from him and, and three from another maker so we've got a, a sort of mixture of the two but these ones here are two of the ones that Ashley made. Um, the groom has uh, the third one at the moment. Now, I had these made to my own design. Most ski and do's today are sold from, you know, Highland Outfitter shops, and they're often quite like this sort of thing. In fact, this one here is one of the better quality Move these out of the way for just for a second. One of the better quality ski and do's. Um, this one is uh, it has a, a blade that's stamped made in Glasgow, stainless steel. Um, so what does it say? Stainless steel art pewter silver, Glasgow, Scotland. So I say this one is one of the better quality ones, but it's still it's plastic. It's supposed to be ebony, carved ebony, but it's plastic. And the fittings on it are silver pewter. Um, and it has uh, an imitation stone in the top, which I believe is probably just coloured glass. I could try and scratch it with something to see, but um, that would just ruin it. So there's, there's no point. And these come with, um, you know, a blade-shaped steel. Um rather than I you, you could call these a knife shaped object rather than a than a than really a knife. But they're ceremonial. They you you have this in your you put this usually in your right sock. Unless you're left handed then you put it in your left sock. Um it's called a ski and do. Ski and do means um literally means black dagger. Uh well ski and means dagger and or knife and black uh, do means black. Although in this case, black is, is really meaning hidden. So it's a hidden knife. So you would hide your knife. You, you'd keep it um, hidden away. You might have a, a broadsword. You might have a dirk um, hanging off your belt. But you would keep this hidden. Now, the point of putting it in your sock is, I believe, to show that you're, it's like a, a symbol of peace because you're not hiding your dagger. You're putting it on show. I think that's slightly tenuous but but there we are but anyway these are the sort of standard thing but many years ago there used to be a, a gun shop in edinburgh in right in the center of town um called dickinson's and they sold you know really smart um shotguns um, I, I think they probably, I think they sold rifles as well, but hunt, deer hunting rifles, that sort of thing. It wasn't a gun shop 
like if you're American, like you would be used to. But I once, I saw in the window, they had a, a number of these. And these were, um, uh, they, they were all different. Every one was different to, to the next one. They're all handmade. Um, and I saw them and I thought, I like that because this is a, this is actually a knife. It's not just a, you know, a knife shaped object. It's actually genuinely a knife. It has a, a, a steel blade. I don't know what the steel is, but it is sharpenable. This one is in fact sharp. It has a, um, a polished edge on it. I don't know if you can catch that at all, uh, which was done I think it was done with a Lansky. It might have been done with a workshop, actually. But it has... This is a full tang blade. It goes all the way through. It has um, a nickel silver bolsters. And I don't know what this is. Rosewood, probably. Um, it's, it's, it, you know, it, but it's a good solid wood. Held in with six pins. The bolsters are pinned, as well as being soldered, I think. Um, but it's it's just a it was just a really nice knife. Now when I asked, oh, there's something. It's a it's a carbon steel blade of some type because this side is the side that was next to my leg went out and it um, uh, it went rusty because um, I put it back in the little thin leather leather sheath and I think after I'd been at some do and I'd been I was I used to be able bodied so I was jigging about. Um, as I used to do quite a lot, and it got quite sweaty, and the the, the, the scabbard itself had got quite sweaty, so of course I um, just you know threw this in my drawer with all my other uh, kilt accoutrements, my sporran and and belt and things, and uh, when I got it out to use it, it was all rusty. Now one day I will sit down and do some uh, proper polishing with some autosol or something, and. Um, and uh, polish that up again, because it, you know, it's doable. I got the rust out of it, but I haven't got the, haven't brought it back to the proper shine. Anyway, so I went to, I wanted to Ashley to make some knives for me, some ski and do's for me, and I sent him some pictures of this. I said, this is what I'm after, and he said he showed me something which was similar to what he's finally produced, but it was very slightly different, in the, a different. Um, different cover materials. So he made these based on those photographs. Now in when you see them in person, you find that it's it's a little bit smaller, but to be honest, it's it's big enough. This this one is actually quite a heavy heavy knife. Um these are these aren't lightweights either. These ones that he made me are in 01 tool steel. Uh, he was going to make them in a stainless steel because I, I I was aware of the problems that I'd had with that one, um, but he made them in a one tool steel. So, you know, that's good stuff. It's it, they're cut, heat treated, ground, um, polished everything in house, which I also which I really like. Again, though, and this is the main thing: they're full tang. He's put brass liners in, um, which we didn't have with with this one. I don't know if that's perhaps necessary because uh, the the stag maybe wouldn't be thick enough without them again they've got nickel silver bolsters i think they're soldered on i don't know that they're pinned i can't certainly can't see the pins um but this is a proper knife it's not a, it's not a bit of um tourist hat, you know, knife shaped object. I mean, some of the tourist ones now don't even come with a metal blade at all. They come with a plastic blade um, or they come with a, a bottle opener, you know, instead of a blade. Uh, not, a, not a blade with a bottle opener inside of it, but just a bottle opener. Um, so these are, these are different to the original, to the original that I had. Um, this, these ones have a convex grind with a final terminating um, uh, termina terminating edge this um, these are not these are a you know, flat ground blade in fact they might even be slightly hollow I think they are slightly hollow um, with a plunge line and a rac ricasso um, the finish on this one 
that the where the handle meets the, the edge is not brilliant. These are really, really good. I mean, I don't imagine that you dish the liners on a knife like this when you've got flat onto flat onto flat. Um, so it does make life a little bit easier, but they're really nicely ground. Um, they've got the uh, hand cut file work in the back. Um, it's sufficiently irregular for it to be clear that it is hand cut, but it's sufficiently uh, uniform to look really good. And then of course they've got stag handles and of course because they're stag it's a natural product uh, they're all just a little bit different they come in they come with a scabbard little sheath uh, you don't use anything fancy because you're just sticking them in your sock but to be honest these um, even this one I wouldn't say was great but it's probably better than these ones I think these are, these are in a way a little bit of a disappointment but doesn't really matter you never see it. I mean, it's just stuffed inside your sock. But, well, oh yes, that's what I was supposed to be showing you. The, yeah, the stag varies one to the other. So, anything else to say about these? I've told you about the history. Um, as I say, the, some people call them dirks and they get confused. The dirk is um, actually a descendant of the bollock dagger um, which was popular right the way across the country I mean when the Mary Rose was sunk or when it was recovered they found hundreds of bollock daggers and the traditional uh, even the regimental daggers that are worn uh, today with the kilt have uh, the, you can see you can see where they come from so it's very, it's very clear. You, you compare the shape to the old, rough carved wood, to the modern, um, silver mounted, ebony, probably plastic, um, dirks. But the dirk is a much bigger fighting knife. These are a utility knife, and I, I think traditionally, I mean, they are a self defence weapon. Um, nowadays, it's, it's purely ceremonial but it was your kind of last ditch defence and your hidden dagger, your black dagger, your ski and do. Um, so, I don't have many of them. I've only got these. And I, this one was my stepfather's. I used to have another one like this, but it was even cheaper and even tattier. Anyway, there we go, ski and do's. And the, these ones particularly, are what I was featuring, are the ones that Ashley Harrison made, especially for my daughter's wedding. Um, which hasn't happened yet, but it happened in uh, two weeks today when I'm filming this, which is the, where are we today, the 13th of February. Two weeks today, this time, which is late at night, she will be married and uh, we'll be throwing the last guest out, hopefully in about 20 minutes' time. So there we are. Thank you very much. Um, if you like your stuff, please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of this, if you want to see the rest of my fixed blade knives, if and when I ever get around to filming them, um, then um, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. Thank you very much. Bye.